Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Our beautiful blue planet that is earth is getting heated day by day due to the growing level of greenhouse gas emissions from human activity. Unless we abate it, unless solvable problems like rising sea levels, acute water scarcity, heat waves are going to make our life miserable. In the last lecture, we basically discuss about the problem of water scarcity and how we can handle with the wisdom of our ancient technologies. And today, we will be discussing about another problem that we face due to the rising of temperature uh, of the earth surface and also the environment and how to have a cooling and ventilation in the houses so that we can live peacefully. So, today topic is basically passive cooling and ventilation techniques in ancient India. So, before getting into the topic, let us look at what are the problems we are facing with modern urban housings. And uh, we know that in urban areas, even some portion of the rural areas, the concrete jungles are coming up all are facing in different directions. They do not have a sense of putting their windows and doors in particular direction depending on the geographical location. And unfortunately, in ancient India, people are having that sense of direction for uh, making a proper house or house. And today, uh, most of the houses are without adequate ventilations, particularly the doors and windows are not adequate today. Of course, uh, certain areas we will see in ancient India, doors and windows are, uh, particularly the windows are uh, were used uh, sparingly. And uh, as I told earlier, houses are built nowadays with concrete glass panels and which trap heat into the houses. And with the modern, you know, knowledge system that we are doing, rather without using our knowledge, we are making houses and that became a really great problem for maintaining a comfortable temperature inside the room. And we are having so less street without trees and community gardens. Now, most of the trees are being uprooted without really planting them again. And uh, today, of course, the houses being built in urban and rural areas are devoid of uh, the personal garden and courtiers, which were the hallmark, particularly in rural, even some portion of the urban areas as well. And uh, it is quite difficult to walk on the street today and so also cycling, which really uh, does not need any conjunction of fuels or fossil fuels. It will not pollute, rather by walking and cycling, we can have good health and also we will travel and without polluting or without leaving any carbon footprints on our environments. There is a big problem of car parking uh, in the urban areas, people do park cars without really thinking about the inconvenience to others on the roads of car, uh, in, you know, urban areas. So, that is a big problem and uh, let us look at more problems in a little different way. That is, uh, as I told that there is a big problem of maintaining a comfortable temperature in the room. Therefore, the people are resorting to maintain the internal temperature or the room temperature by using uh, mechanical cooling in the summer and heating 
in the winter season. As a result that we are consuming large amount of energy and when we are consuming energy then we are also polluting the atmosphere. And there is a big problem of wastewater management as I had told uh, earlier that we use a lot of water and that becomes wastage and then we do not recycle it. And that is a big uh, challenge what we are having in the uh, water scarcity because of uh, high temperature of the surface and atmosphere that we will have to use more amount of water and water become a scarcity. And there is a lack of greenery across the streets and even the houses. So, there is a big problems of maintaining the temperature of the environment and so also the oxygen level in the environment. And uh, at the same time we are uh, dumping large amount of obnoxious gases like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, NOx, SOx and several others uh, due to the burning of fossil fuels. And there is a big uh, problems of uh, the as a result the carbon footprints are quite high. So far our life is concerned that is the new term what people are talking about and carbon credit so that uh, you can uh, you know get some benefit out of it and you can manage to save the environment from holocaust. And the, beside this there is a problem of the road safety as I told and crime is rising at an alarming date particularly in India where people are being hankering after uh, acquiring of materials being uh, persuaded by the market forces with constant advertisement bombardments that is going on. So therefore that is a, a big problem has to be challenged and it looks to me the mind is polluted and that is causing a lot of problem due to this materialistic uh, way of life. And what are the crisis of sustainability? Although in most of ancient Indian technology the sustainability was a part and parcel and uh, it was inbuilt in the systems but today we do not have that. And as I told there is a big problem of global warming and environmental pollution over exploitation of natural resources because the resources uh, is getting crunched day by day and that is due to the over consumption of product and wastage of resources because people do not have mind that uh, the mother earth is having limitation in providing the uh, resources natural resources for making development. So, there is a only one way of doing is that we will have to consume less and also the waste less because the population is going up then also the demand is uh, uh, going up. So, it looks to me that maybe we need another 5 to 6 planets to have supply of that for so that it can manage otherwise it will be difficult. So, as I told there is a depletion of fossil fuels being limited. Uh, and the consumption is increasing at an alarming rate uh, due to the modern lifestyles and of course the technologies and the market forces are pushing people to have a life very luxurious life and without bothering about environment. With this situation question arises how to cool the temperature of building for comfort because we need a comfortable life. So, uh, what are the ways people have adopted uh, is, uh, is the question why I need to see, but let us look at how the people are making building. So, if you look at this building, if you look at this building that it is having a lot of concrete structure, these are concrete structures and honeycomb structures they have used and lot of concrete being used which will be absorbing large amount of heat and also radiating. And look at this, uh, this is a glass panel, panel and these are the glass windows what people are using. This is the glass made of glass and uh, what it does 
it allows the light and heat to enter into, but heat cannot really come out of it. So, this is the uh, big uh, problem what we are having that it is raising the temperature of the environment inside the room. And uh, also if you look at as a result that uh, to cool the room to a comfortable temperature, we will be using air conditioner and uh, I have taken a, a image of a building one side of the of course, the building which are really crowded with several air condition, there is no space available to put another one. So, uh, that is the way what people have found out uh, in uh, modern time to keep the temperature of the room or the hall or a place of living uh, uh, comfortable. And as a result, if you look at the sale of these air conditioning systems are increasing at an alarming rate just to give some idea about the at what rate it is increasing. Uh, I have taken some data of uh, 2013 to 14, maybe 5 years data, but it is also quite huge. About 3.3 million air conditioners were sold in India, but today it may be 4.5 or 5 million air conditioner uh, might be uh, sold in India at this moment. Besides that, if you look at all air condition being operated in India will be uh, maybe go, uh, the number of all air conditioner conditioning systems um, used in India will be much more than maybe a uh, 2, 3 crore. And uh, if you look at the China 2010, maybe something 8 years back, I am talking about 15 million air conditioner units were sold. And which is uh, of course, uh, for uh, quite a bit number as compared to the Indian number, but still both the countries are really consuming a lot of it is not only India, China, but USA, other uh, countries they are using large number of air conditioning systems. And, um, it is being anticipated that within 15 years, Saudi Arabia could consume more oil than it exports largely due to the air conditioning system, due to the uses of the air conditioning system. By 2050, world consumptions of energy for cooling and heating could expand tenfold whatever it is today. And if you look at where we will get those energy because the fossil fuel is getting depleted at an alarming rate. And then also the cost of the fossil fuel is being escalated due to the higher consumption rate. And let us look at what do you mean by air conditioning is basically to condition the air. And it is a process of controlling the temperature humidity, ventilation and air quality of a building or a vehicle uh, such that you can have a very comfortable temperature and also comparable uh, atmosphere inside the room or the building or a car. So, that is basically, but in India what we do we are only looking at the temperature because to maintain the quality, air quality and humidity is a quite a uh, challenging affair. And so for that, you will have to make the system very uh, complex in nature. Let, let us look at a simple air conditioning system, a schematic I have shown here. If you look at it, it is having various components. One is uh, corresponding to the compressor and the three is your condenser, which is I have shown here and it is having a condenser fan and then uh, it is having also the receiver or dryer. Uh, of course, in India we do not have that components and it is having six the expand uh, or this is known as also expansion valve or the throttle valve being used. Then uh, it is having another component is evaporators. Of course, it will be having a blower which will take the cool air from this evaporator. Let us see how it is uh, worked. 
generally the refrigerant will be passing through this uh, circuit and uh, the uh, cold vapor which is at a lower pressure will be compressed uh, with the help of compressor to a high pressure and uh, also the uh, hot uh, compressed gas will be passing through the this condenser and in which uh, the heat will be uh, getting into uh, transfer to the atmosphere surrounding which will be at a higher temperature and then this will be passing through uh, the pipe. Uh, the pipe is basically receiver and then afterwards this uh, cold compressed uh, liquid it became converted into liquid and then it will be expanded in the throttle valve or the expansion valve and which will be cold liquid and vapor and then it will be passing through this uh, evaporators where some of the heat will be taking and then it will be converted into the cold vapor at a little low pressure and then it again goes back to uh, compressor where it will be getting compressed. So, this cycle it maintain and through that we will be getting cold air of course, one can maintain the humidity by passing the air through the uh, dryer. So, uh, if you look at in this system we use the refrigerant several of kind uh, of refrigerants can be used some of them are ethyl ether, ammonia, methyl chloride, ethyl chloride, sulfur dioxide hydrocarbons, a host of it propane, butane, gasoline, ethane, ethylene extra. But the most uh, refrigerants which are used in our country is chlorofluorocarbons and which are quite dangerous and uh, of course, the R11 and R12 being used earlier days and uh, that has been banned across the globe because of fact that uh, this chlorofluorocarbons are considered to be most dangerous to the ozone layer and greatest cause of global warming because it uh, consumes the ozone and that uh, protects us from the ultraviolet rays which is be uh, entering into atmosphere. And uh, of course, nowadays people are uh, talking about R22 or 134 and these are having also similar, but it is having uh, it is making less damage to the ozone layer. But now people are talking about the refrigerants which are uh, won't be damaging the ozone layer. But however, they are quite costly. And this uh, air conditioning system, what we had discussed here, is basically uh, vapor compression air conditioning system. There is a also uh, absorption systems and which uses the ammonia, but that is being used for a large scale and it is little cumbersome to have a smaller air conditioning or uh, refrigeration systems. So, uh, if you look at what we are doing, we are basically trying to uh, heat the atmosphere uh, through the condenser, uh, because we are rejecting the heat from, from uh, taken from the room and to the atmosphere. As a result, the surrounding temperature is increasing. But the more important thing is that it is uh, basically the refrigerants which are being used in this air conditioning system could damage the ozone layer which is a threat for the survival on this beautiful blue planet. Question is uh, why to go for ancient Indian architectures uh, such that it will be have a house which is comfortable indigenous architecture refer to the type of architecture based on local climate and local needs. So, that is a very important one. The basis of indigenous architecture is climate and location of place, locally available materials and local skills. That is a very important thing which I had emphasized earlier also. And ancient Indian architecture techniques is basically sustainable, durable and harmony with mother nature and involves the passive control techniques for keeping the room temperature at a comfortable level. So, that is the crux of the thing we need to look at how to design and uh, the house such that we may not really 
uh, have this air conditioning system, we can live a comfortable life without that. The characteristics of ancient Indian housing we will have to look at. Generally, in the back yard of our houses, we are having vegetable and herbal garden as well as certain seasonal fruit trees which are lacking today even in rural areas. And uh, trees like asoka, neem, mango extra were kept around the house so that it will be uh, giving a lot of oxygen and also it will be giving shade so that uh, it will not uh, uh, make the room to go for a very higher temperature that is uncomfortable. The bus to system which is basically traditional Indian system of architecture uh, was used earlier and that uh, was helping to integrate architecture with the mother nature and which encompasses the flexible design guidelines for space, sunlight, ventilations and various utilities what it will be having. And uh, we are using basically uh, materials for the house construction which were locally available. The construction techniques were as simple as possible such that person uh, who are leaving could construct and repair, maintain it by themselves and they feel good about it. They will be using their creative uh, energy or creativity to develop and find out what they need and what are the things and as a result they will be learning a lot in the process. And local architecture and cultural heritage were maintained and uh, good health of residents were ensured uh, at that time because they will be doing lot of physical work and they will be feeling very comfortable and proud of having making a house and living there for maintenance also. And positive energy creation in the house was uh, earlier uh, being used and spirituality and cordial relationship. Uh, were ensured in family. Today, there is a big problem of this uh, relationship even in, uh, in modern time, relationship in family is also not that good as it was earlier and values of uh, human life were very good uh, due to the good relationship among the family members. And let us look at the climate in uh, India, what we are having and if you look at the map I have shown here and if you uh, look at this Kashmir, Jammu Kashmir regions and some Himachal Pradesh other region that is a cold. Of course, the Gujarat and then uh, some portion of Maharashtra and uh, Rajasthan, these are warm and humid uh, regions and uh, in the mid, the central portion is a composite and whereas the eastern side of coastal areas is uh, basically warm and humid and uh, this as it uh, if you look at Rajasthan and then uh, Gujarat and then some portion of Madhya Pradesh are quite hot being a desert region and then arid region. And temperate of course is a very small places which will be there here in uh, Karnatak regions and that is a, a pink color and cold regions uh, you will find as I told earlier that in uh, Jammu Kashmir and then Himachal Pradesh and some portion of the this northeastern regions and some pockets in the western uh, side of the west, western coastal side. So, uh, if you look at in India, we are having basically hot and dry for two thirds of the year and it, the, there will be seasonal variation relative humidity can be less than 100 per uh, relative humidity can be less than 10 percent in summer and the temperature can vary minus 45 degree to 50 degree uh, uh, in the entire country. So, if you look at different region is having different problems so far comfortable uh, condition is to be maintained. Therefore, the solution need not to be the same across the country rather we will have to use depending on the situation. So, let us look at the what are the passive cooling techniques which were being practiced in earlier days. One is space utilization, flexible building envelope 
and microclimate modification, thermal mass, night radiation cooling and ventilation. These are can be uh, used uh, various permutation combination depending on the locality where you are going to have the houses. So, let us uh, look at first the thermal design of rural houses which are um, basically uh, being used in the among the poor section of the people, but they were uh, using the uh, scientific knowledge at that time. If you look at this is uh, let us say this is the east side, this is west side, this is north side and the south. If you look at the sun path, it takes a goes high up and there may be sun at the mid uh, day, it will be around in this place and then it will be going down. And uh, whereas, in the winter season, let us say December 21, this will be going in a little lower uh, level and you will see that if we will maintain the house in such a way that uh, having uh, towards the it is facing the house is facing to the south and then it is uh, having a V safe roof and you will see that the when the summer is uh, there and then it is uh, kind of said being created and in winter it will be the sun takes a different path. If you rotate the inclined roof house by 90 degree, the morning sun will come on the eastward uh, inclinations and evening sun will be come on the westward slide which helps in achieving the cooling inside the building and that is being taken care. Let me uh, show you that in a window or in a door you can have these uh, overhangs. Of course, this is a uh, people who are using a inverted uh, safe roof so that uh, you are having a ave or the overhangs are there in such a way that uh, in the summer the direct sun won't enter into the room, but whereas in the December or in the winter season the sun will enter and keep the room warm in a winter season. So, that is the thing what being used earlier days unfortunately today uh, people do not have that kind of knowledge to uh, also may not have that much of time to do the calculation and then have that because traditional knowledge is being lost. So, these inclined roofs were being used in houses of uh, ancient villages. Let us look at how does the roof shape cool the house and uh, the advantage of inclined roof is uh, basically uh, it will be keeping uh, the heat at a, a way and such that beside this it will be using some materials like straw and then hairs so that which will act like a heat insulation uh, so that the room will be uh, kept at a low temperature even in the mid summer. So, let us look at how does this uh, the inclined roof helps in um, transferring less amount of heat into the room. The sun radiation we can heat the room some of the thing will be transferred into the uh, inside the room and uh, some of them will be reflected back and beside this uh, that relative uh, you know the roof will be also radiating heat. So, that very less amount of heat will be entering into the room uh, inside. So, that the temperature will be lower as I told earlier this roof materials also are made of uh, uh, you know hay or the grass or the straw such that uh, it will be uh, acting like a heat insulators. So, therefore, the less amount of heat will be transferred to the room. And uh, let us look at natural ventilation system in the earlier in ancient houses. And uh, generally two uh, systems were being used, one is of course, the wind driven crust ventilation, other is buoyancy driven ventilation. Uh, so, windows are provided on the wall opposite of doors properly for better cross ventilation because of fact that we need to have air for ventilation. However, this air should not really uh, impinge into the uh, person who are living directly rather it should be the velocity will be decreased such that it will be remain comfortable and also it will be scooping out 
the uh, air which are having stale air or some other things so that it will be go away and uh, ventilation will be good. Therefore, the windows are in kept not just opposite of the door, but little uh, away from that in the opposite wall so that the air recirculation will be there across the entire room. And the houses were designed to get advantage of natural breeze for the houses, uh, house air ventilation and cooling. <coughs> so, let us uh, look at like uh, there is another design of the uh, inclined roof such that it will be act like a buoyancy driven ventilation kind of thing. If you look at the sun is falling on this roof, there will be temperature and there is a gap here, a passage is provided such that air can enter into the this uh, roof like uh, air will be entering here and then it will be passing through these ventilators which will be there on the top of it like in this region such that the it will be cooling the places. Of course, that has been used uh, in several places particularly the houses where uh, people will be making a gas or the houses which will be cooking being done such that the air will be going through this way. And uh, natural ventilation lies relies on the bridges to remove moisture, heat, odor and active gases. For example, there will be some places as I told there will be air here and there is space being provided so that the fresh air can enter into here the moisture, dust and heat can be going through this and there is a passage is given on the top as I told here this is one design like where it can be driven by the buoyancy forces. The entire roof is not exposed to the sun at the same time. Uh, so whereas the modern building of the flat roof is exposed to the sun throughout and beside this the rooms are built of different heights such so that one will become shadow on the other that is being uh, such so that uh, it won't really get heated off uh, all the time by the sun as i told that the inclined roofs although it is costly to have that but it is advantageous from the various regions so, uh, let us look at a, another step well, we had a discussion about uh, Rani ki Bath step well and this is a magnanimous step well is known as a Chand Bauri and some people uh, call it uh, Bali kind of things and this is located in the village of Avnari in Avanagri, earlier name is Avanagri means radiance in Rajasthan and it was constructed around 800 to 900 C by King Chanda of uh, Nikumba dynasty and it was dedicated to uh, Hasat Mata, the goddess of joy and happiness. Look at this, this is quite looks to be very magnanimous in nature and this is your place where uh, water will be stored and these are the steps and various layers and then will be there like there are several uh, steps will be there and one side there is a uh, pavilions and these pavilions were being occupied by the royal people, influential people and this place was uh, basically a, a meeting place for women folk who will be around and then it takes temperature of this place in the hot summer will be 5 to 6 degrees Celsius lower than the ambient temperature and it is also uh, like water being used from this place and uh, if you look at it, it is quite magnanimous how they built and lot of beautification being done and uh, some people were also saying that there is a uh, tunnel which goes for a longer time and so that one can escape from this place to other things particularly the royal uh, uh, people or the king if they will be attacked by others. And uh, they have combined this uh, the cold uh, a comfortable room space along with the water uh, conservation and also water utilization. So, if you look at uh, do not think such an elaborate aid so simple in its basic philosophy synergy various needs in a compact way. 
how did our ancestor begin to think that one can dig into ground and use the earth as a heat sink because this uh, temperature was quite low and have access to the water put a pavilion unto it so that it remains comfortable throughout the year. And uh, this is basically a very great example of the space utilization a lot of utilities are being combined together and it is also a monument which is has created a lot of uh, fanfare among the people even today. Uh, so, is it uh, not a fabulous technology par excellence what modern engineers can think of. So, uh, this is a thing what we can learn combining this and there is a flexible uh, building envelopes which is being uh, done and this is about Panch Mahal in Fatehpur Sikri. The thermal characteristics of outer building surface is being changed by movable curtains and screens. And uh, of course, when I had visited uh, this Panch Mahal maybe around 10 years back, I was wondering how the uh, Akbar and then other uh, Mughal kings were uh, living in this place because they were controlling the entire India from this uh, uh, Fatehpur Sikri uh, fort. And in case of houses, rolling bamboos and grass curtains were used so that you can maintain. So, this is uh, known as basically microclimate modification what they do by basically using uh, various kinds of techniques like um, they were also using the water bodies or fountains uh, in the courtyards and uh, like other court courtyards so that uh, they can change control the temperature or uh, they can control the climate around that. And uh, so, this is the Fatehpur Sikri where the throne is here and uh, so, if you look at this schematic diagram, this is the throne where the uh, emperor will be uh, sitting and then uh, making all this code work and there is a grass mat uh, sprinkled with water, this one layer and there is another layer and this is your water channel which is having across all around. So, if you uh, look at the hot air which will be passing through this grass mat with uh, of course, sprinkle water that will be cooled down and again it will go for another layer and uh, some of the uh, water whichever is there it will be falling down here and then it will be maintaining the humidity. And uh, this is so that it will remain cool in this uh, even hot summer. So, that was a good things what they had done uh, using the both the water bodies and also the uh, cartons uh, with mat uh, by sprinkling water on them and this is Diwani E khas of the red fort. And uh, let us look at the microclimate modification urban areas, uh, I am talking about Jaisalmer in Rajasthan where the temperature will be 44 to 5 degree Celsius in the entire region. Let us uh, look at this uh, uh, topology of that aerial view of this city, ancient city. And uh, major streets, if you look at these are the major streets which is oriented to the north and then east directions. And uh, minor city is rect at a right angle to that, these are minor cities, minor streets. And uh, the compact structure of houses does not allow the sun to penetrate in that because they are having common walls, I will show you the picture a uh, little later on. And the buildings were generally ground plus two or three structure approached by a narrow streets. The streets some of them are narrow particularly which is perpendicular to the major streets and that was purposefully made and dense cluster of buildings were built at that time. And uh, if you look at this is the uh, boundary walls which is having ventilators, there is a various gate Malika gate and Kishan gate and uh, Garishar tank, there is a water tank, this is a fort and this is of course, Amar Sagar gate. And uh, as I told that it is having common walls building with the unequal heights and this technique was being used uh, earlier in rural areas 
also. The walls of 6 meter height uh, were built around this city uh, to protect the city from the sandstorm because this is uh, located in Rajasthan, the desert area. And the pavements also made in such a way that there would not be any dust, right, because this will be uh, the surface uh, will be dust free. So, the design ensures shade and coolness on the street as well as minimal exposure to hot and dry climate. So, at the town scale, the buildings are unequal heights with parapets and high walls creating uneven skylines and desired shading of each other. See, this is the at the building at the town level people might have designed that way. And how they had done is also one question. As I told, there is a cluster of houses and each houses will be having a courtyards and these are the secondary street, these are the main street and these are having common walls. So, generally whenever we look at common wall among the houses we feel oh it is badly designed, but for that reason it is good. If you look at these are the with the parapets and then uh, things and these are the uh, uh, one building, this another taller building so that there is a shade which is having here and you can see that and these are the narrow lengths and generally the rooms of uh, the houses of various kinds were there for the rich medium income group and the poor people and uh, various kinds and then of course, the very uh, rich people, there is a Haveli and other things where which I will not be discussing. Generally, there will be a courtyard, if you look at this are the courtyard, right. And uh, there will be a veranda and there is a room and in some places only courtyard, veranda, room and there is a various kinds you can see here. And uh, windows are generally small and fitted with a solid timber shutters. And uh, these windows are limited to upper floor due to the privacy at the time. And almost all the houses in Jaisalmer have a basement, but these rooms are designed to be used only as a strong room for valuables and also it will be very cool. And uh, you know that was at that time even people are using. building of facades have large number of projection like uh, jharkas and chajas to provide shade to the uh, facades. <coughs> and the front part of facade which remains exposed are controlled by creating deeply curved patterns we will see that in the uh, later on that it is being designed so that it will be acting like a, uh, the fins for the transferring of heat. Uh, and also uh, it will be, uh, it will not heat it during the summer season. Some of the more thermal features of the houses, if you look at, at the town level, unequal heights with the wind pavilions and high parapets were, walls were used to create an uneven skyline, uh, shading each other in the, in the process, as I told earlier. At a macro level, building uh, facets had a large number of projection like sunsets and balconies, so that you can maintain the temperature uh, low. At the micro level, the flat parts of the building facets were deeply carved creating fin surfaces, so that the heat can be transferred. Let us look at uh, this uh, one example like uh, carved panels were being used, uh, which were uh, being helping in maintaining the temperature at low at a micro level in the house level. So, uh, at the three level uh, strategies uh, were being adopted to keep the uh, you know city at the lower temperature although it is uh, near the desert. So, beside the very narrow vertical ducts and staircase shafts were used to deflect window down into the house at the Jalsmar. So, if you look at this will act as a basically vertical ducts which will be heated off and this uh, coatates and says so that this will be the air will be passing through this due to the buoyancy and then rooms it will be passing through the these rooms and then it will be moving upwards. So, this will act as a ventilator also it will be cooling the rooms. And after walls being protected from solar radiation the roof 
is the only one that absorbs the major solar heat gain in the buildings and that is being uh, being done in such a way that it will be absorb the less amount of heat and massive roof st uh, structures being made of something 0 0.45 meter of earth ensued a small decrement factor of 0 0.162 and large time lag around 24 hours the temperature will not be really uh, you know go up higher. So, this is the uh, cross section which I have shown here and the earth field is very high something uh, uh, quite a bit and there is of course, grass mat and the timber beams uh, you know later on people have used also the stone beams be because of uh, not being uh, availability of timber. And these all these things what I have taken basically from Binod Gupta who had done a great research on this uh, thermal aspects of the houses in Jaisimhal. Uh, which is a very old city. If you look at the material conductivity properties, if you look at the thermal conductivity concrete 0 0.72, mixture of mud and dried grass of water 0 0.52 and the wood around 0 0.12. If you look at that they were not in a concrete is not the right material uh, for the houses because it absorbs large amount of heat as compared to that the mud and then wood will be far better. Summary of the methods used for thermal management of Jalsmar is are basically dense clustering of buildings uh, were being used. The sun rays would not be uh, falling directly uh, on the buildings or it will be minimized by proper orientation and structural projection. And, uh, cooling of the sunlit surfaces by use of uh, facet and with fins and massive construction of uh, roofs and walls uh, were being used so that uh, you know temperature will be comfortable in the room and coat airs and other air ducts were used for ventilation. Therefore, the several techniques were used to keep the uh, temperature. Uh, several techniques were used to have a better management of the heat due to the sun which will be entering into the room and also during the winter season. So, uh, if you look at uh, there is another method which is being used basically thermal mass. It is a concept by which mass of the building provides inertia against the day and night temperature variation and thick walls with mud and stone delay the heating of the building and smoothening of diurnal temperature variation. Massive structures takes time to heat as well as to cool down uh, and if you look at it, it is basically inverse in the case of lightweight structure. If the structure is lightweight then what will happen it will heat it up uh, very fast and so also it will cool it down quickly. So, let us look at the Konark Sun Temple and uh, about which is known as Black Pagoda and Konark means basically Kona and Ark and uh, it is located around 66 kilometer from Bhuvaneshwar, Odisha. It is one of the UNESCO World Heritage Site, one of the seven wonders of India. Its height is around 98 feet and it was built around 1238 to 1200 and by the king Narasimha Deva around 1250 C. So, if you look at the ventilation system is uh, quite unique in this temple and these are the ventilators and they are located at the east and the southern side uh, of this region. And uh, these are the tunnels which is having and uh, the size of ventilation tunnel was around 2.5 to 2.5 square both the east west side and the north south side uh, direction for uh, making this ventilation is good. <coughs> and uh, he, and uh, it is basically hot air which will go passing through the uh, through the doors it will be going through this region and it will be. Um, 
uh, passing through these ventilators which will be located here. So, let us look at why was courtier uh, used in ancient uh, buildings, uh, particularly in the southern part of the country, which is having a warm and humid climate. It is not that only southern part of a country it is being, it was being used and we have seen also that it was used in Jaisalmer in uh, area. And uh, so, this is the uh, courtyard which is I have shown here and uh, this courtyard house in Tamil Nadu of course, this is all being paved, but earlier days generally the soil being uh, remain here in this region the courtyard which was used as a garden and it will also recharging of the water and it will be helping in uh, the ventilations. So, uh, let us look at how does it helps in ventilation because of it will be heated up and the warm air will be moving up from the courtyard and the fresh air will be entering into the windows and so that this will be act like a ventilation system and uh, it will be cooling the temperature, uh, cooling the temperature of this rooms and also it will be providing ventilation, it will be providing the uh, also the recharging of the uh, water. So, if you look at the courtyard acts uh, also termed as a microclimate modifier, it provides natural light into the buildings, it induces air circulation inside buildings. And as I told earlier, vegetation water bodies in the courtyard helps increase humidity of dry air in hot climates. In some arid region, act as a rain water collectors and recharging the ground water. So, that is a beautiful system uh, which was uh, which is not there today uh, due to various reasons. Let us look at uh, some other ventilation system which are being used and this is a house in uh, old house in Sajanabad uh, and uh, if you look at this houses is being made this is the terrace and it is having a parapet here and uh, there is a light structure which is being used intentionally such that in the uh, daytime then this courtyard there is a courtyard which will be uh, helping uh, have a air circulation through this room and there will be uh, light structure. So, that air will be hot air will be passing through it and then air will be uh, moving upward due to the buoyancy forces. And uh, this is the similar thing also we had seen earlier in Havel in Rajasthan in Jaisalmer and uh, the, that warm air will be going up and then that will be replaced due to the movement of air from outside to the rooms uh, through the windows of the rooms and also the doors. So, that there is a ventilation system. So, this is a very beautiful system which was uh, prevailing earlier uh, and they have done it purposefully. If you look at this parapet particularly, we will see that this is very critical and what will happen in during the uh, night time that uh, this surface, this uh, roof of this house which will be radiating the heat so that there will be circulations and then uh, some of the air which will be coming through this because the parapet won't allow the move to other side so it will be moving in this way the cool air will be entering in the other direction through the windows and then you will also get so because uh, that is the parapet is made in one side, but in modern time what we are doing we do the parapet on the other uh, all the sides and this also the air is being provided so that uh, the air will enter into through these uh, passages. So, this is a beautiful system which was there. So, let us look at some of the things which uh, in modern people have, uh, have done and uh, this is the thermal performance in traditional and modern buildings in Nagapattanam in Tamil Nadu and this is uh, the top view of a traditional building. Of course, this will be having a courtyard and open spaces and then uh, the according to the Bastu they have designed this room, this is a bedroom, gathering space and puja rooms and then store rooms. And this is a modern building which people use it 
and which is having the same space they have having. And uh, what they have done in the traditional house, the mod motor with the mod plaster being used in the modern the concretes and the other things are being coated with the wind catchers and terracotta tiles are being used for both the houses. So, if you look at uh, they have measured the temperature and it is temperature in degree Celsius. This is the comfort zone that is 30 degrees Celsius and this time in hours 24 hours. And if you look at the outdoor temperature, it goes something uh, around 26 degrees Celsius to the 41 kind of degree Celsius at the peak around 12 to 1 o'clock, it goes up. But whereas, if you look at the modern building, uh, temperature goes up to even 36, 37, which is uncomfortable. But in the traditional building, the temperature remains almost a very comfortable zone, except very small change in the from the comfortable zone that is around 30, 31 goes around 12 and 13. So, if you little bit modify this situation then you know it will be in comfortable zone. So, therefore, if we can adopt traditional technology even today, we can have a very comfortable space for us to live in the house and uh, we can design that. That is being and let me talk about that uh, importance of lime over the Portland cement. The uh, lime stabilizes the internal humidity building by absorbing and releasing moisture uh, because it can breathe. And uh, production of lime consumes less energy as compared to cement, thereby reducing the greenhouse emission. It is biodegradable, and lime motors ensure recycling of bricks, unlike the cement. Portland cement what we use. Lime is highly durable as compared to the Portland cement as claimed by some of the researchers and its thermal conductivity is much less than the Portland cement, but unfortunately we are using the uh, Portland cement and earlier days lime were being processed by the uh, unskilled people even in rural areas and the technology was there, but today the technology of the Portland cement is with the market forces not with the people. But although the uh, lime is having a lot of advantages over uh, the Portland cement, but however we do not use it. So, it is unfortunate and we should uh, in ancient time lime was being used um, in most of the uh, buildings, uh, particularly the palaces and other places, larger buildings structures. Let us look at what we can learn from this uh, past and how we can do. In ancient India, passive measures were taken by and large to respond to the context for solving problems and several types of passing cooling systems such as space utilization, flexible building envelope, microclimate modification, thermal mass, night radiation cooling and ventilation were used in ancient Indian buildings which we can utilize today and indigenous architecture works in close association with mother nature and uh, those techniques are basically sustainable and eco friendly and uh, it provides better thermal comfort for the residents at any point of time and we need to have a proper amalgamation of passive cooling techniques in modern buildings such that the energy consumption can be reduced. And uh, according to me, these kind of more studies are required and uh, also it should be included in the curriculum of civil engineering and architecture, so that our student will be aware about this and utilize that for making the buildings. Thank you very much for listening to this. I hope and wish that we can adopt some of them in the modern time to minimize uh, the energy consumption and adopt the passive cooling system so that we can have a comfortable life. Thank you very much. <coughs>